I'm not opposed to threesomes. It just does scare me because I think that's one of those things where you think you'd be open to it and then after you'd be like, oh shit. I think if I did it, it would have to be like in Vegas with like somebody we paid. Very intoxicated. Yes. Yeah. Hello everyone, my name is Jessica and welcome back to my channel. Finally, a break from true crime to get into the okay baby stuff. I've been talking about it in so many of my videos ever since the beginning of December and it's like been ahead. You'll see once you, if you watch this video, once you see the content I'm about to show you from them, you'll see why it's taking so long and why I said I've lost brain cells. So the reason I'm talking about this is because obviously they're a trending couple. Kira just got married um, to Preston, the one that she allegedly cheated on oscar with and i'm here to unpack it and just give you the receipts give you the details and also why am i even looking into this is because if you watch any of my other videos i'm someone who i don't believe things i'm very skeptical okay not that i just don't believe everything but when there's like a one main narrative it's just like it makes me really question it so uh when everyone's like she's a cheater like all this kind of stuff like i mean i definitely believe that she did but like uh, i don't know there's just all this information out there and i don't I just, I like to look into things myself. So maybe you're gonna learn some new stuff here in my video and that'd be cool if you did. If you don't, if you don't like it, whatever. Let's just hop into this craziness of a video. <laughs> okay, so I thought it was only fitting to first start off with how Oscar and Kira met. They started their channel here on YouTube called OK Baby. They started as teen parents when Kira was pregnant with her first child. They now have four children together but are no longer together. Kira actually, like I said the, in the intro, she just got married to somebody else. And here they share their story about how they met. I found it very interesting because there's a lot of similarities to how the relationship ended, which you hear like sayings like how a relationship started, how it's going to end. And that's very much so how it happened. There's obviously a lot of other factors, which I'm going to get into in this video as well. But uh, I was very surprised, honestly, like I never people I've heard them say like, oh, there was cheating at the beginning and they like writing off, oh, they're just teenagers. But it's like, no, I think they were like really ingrained who they were back then to who they are now. Like I know we grow and evolve and change as people, but you'll see if, if you're familiar with their story at all, you're going to see. And then I'm going to try to interject not that much. And then I will, I'm actually going to overlay from their breakup video which has since been deleted on youtube other people have screen recorded it and stuff so i'll interject that just so you can see what i'm talking about here <laughs> so basically guys kira and i met in kind of a weird way so basically what happened was i was dating one of her close close friends we'll call this person letter n i was with a friend and then what happened was basically i had a fallout with this friend i dated one of her other friends letter a yeah and that's how i actually got like officially introduced to her letter a and kira were pretty good well they were yeah they were pretty good friends mm -hmm. they were swimming and stuff but still didn't work out so we had a complete fallout there kira stopped being friends with letter a they just stopped talking yeah not for any specific reason yeah, so kira and i were friends at that point but not really we're not best friends but like we could have a conversation i got back with letter n <laughs> i was like oh letter n's kind of cute let's collect her and we would hang out with letter n and she would hang out with her boyfriend letter h <laughs> letter n i don't know what happened letter n and they stopped talking and we went like kind of a year without talking huh i was friends with letter h actually at that point that's funny i was really good friends with letter h I'm just hanging out with the boyfriend a lot, basically. Then, when did you start dating? Letter B. Letter, Letter B. B. <laughs> Letter B was the beginning of my 10th grade. So then he was best friends with, like, a group of guys, and then Letter B. And they were good friends for, like, a good while, and then him and Letter B started dating. And Letter B was my best friend since, like, ninth or 8th grade, because we played volleyball together. And we became really good friends, like, we would, like, text every once in a while, or... If I ever had a problem with Letter B, I would text her, and she would kind of help me out. Yeah. So this is the part that really surprised me. In the in the video of their breakup video, is that Kira was comforting somebody else. So Thing. Like besides some attitude here and there and comforting another guy because he was sad. Oh. So obviously Preston and Hannah were having probably troubles in the relationship and then because Kira was really good friends with Preston, she was like a li listening ear just like Kira was with Oscar and Kira's best friend at the time. Freaking weird. Like, did you guys know that? Who are like really interested in the story? Like, I found that very surprising. That's super weird to me. But yeah, let's just finish out their story here. Or like same with like letter H. We just were like always there to talk to each other. I didn't really have any friends when I was dating letter H, so um, it was nice to be able to talk to him about things or like for help or advice because he was always around. He was always at letter B's house. She would babysit letter B's little brother. Yeah. She was always at the house too. Yeah. So but besides her being my best friend, I was like just there a lot even when she wasn't. Uh, guys, this whole time we were just friends. I'm not even joking. We never even had like one weird thought. Yeah. No. Like nothing. Nothing like that. We never even like tried to make a move. Nothing. We were too into our own relationship. I was in like a three and a half year relationship. Yeah. My priorities were not Oscar. Yeah. By all means. Besides our friendship, I did value our friendship. It was kind of a hard breakup. Like so between them. So I was always with letter B like supporting that and helping her and stuff so we did talk and I didn't want to text him I thought it was disrespectful even though what I ended up doing was <laughs> yeah, basically letter, letter B and I had a pretty bad fallout and it went from being a break to she, she basically started hooking up with a bunch of dudes oh god <laughs> and then I texted Kira during that fallout because I wasn't sure if it was over or if like what was going on so I texted her and then she kind of told me yeah it's pretty much over and she tried helping me out and I was basically asking her for advice I was asking her for advice one day and um we just started kind of 
it was weird. She she was going through a rough time with her boyfriend, like a really rough time, but they were breaking up on and off. Like it was getting to a weekly point, huh? They would break up for a day every week almost. It kind of just got to that point where you just you know it's over, but you keep trying to fix it, keep trying to fix yeah. it. So then one of those days when they broke up, I was texting her for advice, and she started kind of flirting <laughs> a lot. And I was kind of like thinking, oh my gosh, maybe I'm just a rebound. Uh, maybe she's just upset. So I kept trying to make it so like he wasn't casual. like dodging it. Like he wasn't like. Like, that was like, oh no, yeah. But he was just like, he wasn't feeding too much into it because he thought he was a rebound. Yeah, not only did I think it was a rebound, I was kind of just like, oh, she's not going to like this. I know she's going to get back with what to say. So we did a lot. So I kept skipping around questions and then <laughs> she asked me one time, oh, I don't know how we got to the conversation of camping. And she basically asked me, would you like to go camping one day? <laughs> and I said, yeah, sure, blah, blah, I was trying to be casual about it. But she kept saying, oh, well, I don't have a tent, I don't have a tent. I kept trying to get out of I was like, oh, well, I think I have a two person tent, blah, blah, blah. And this sounds like I was a weird creeper and he was like, oh, we gotta stop. No, he was saying things to his friends. He was into it. Yeah, was I was into it, but I wasn't trying to show her that. And after that, I think she got a little embarrassed about it because I skipped around it so much. Yeah, because I was just like, okay, like, this is just weird. I'm not a girl to do that. I never have been a girl to really, like, be the one to do something. Like, usually the guy would do something, but this time I had gone out of my way and I, I wasn't, like, in love with him at this point. So I was just like, oh, okay, like, whatever, back off. You know, I'm not gonna, like, go any more into it. And we went back to our lives. One day, Kira and Letter B, we all went to the park together and Kira got into, like, a little cat fight with Letter B over, <laughs> over nothing that related to him. Yeah, something no. completely different. So I think, I think Kira was pretty upset that night. And then that night she texted me, like, why'd you have to go out with Letter B? And I was kind of like, what? What do you mean? Like, what the hell? Where did that come from? She's such a brat, this and that, blah, blah. <laughs> okay, first of all, I didn't say brat. I didn't say brat, but along the lines of that, like, I was mad at her, so I was saying, like, why'd you have to go out with her? Also, I meant it as in, why'd you have to go out with her? Because I have feelings for you. And at that point, I didn't think I could be with him because of that. So she basically told me that she liked me. She had feelings for me that night. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you know what? If you still feel the same, you have to wake up in the morning and text me. Give me a little heart or something. So next morning, I'm at work because I used to work at a golf course. It was like 4 a.m. And she texted me a little heart at 4 a.m. And I was like, what the? We basically told each other we liked each other, but there wasn't much we could do about it because Letter B and Letter H were still in the picture. After, after this point, we started talking and then we planned on going on dates. They got ruined a couple times because Letter B and Letter H were getting them. I told, I basically told Letter B that I was kind of over it and, and I just wanted to be. Her I was broken up with Letter H at this point, yeah. so we started seeing each other. And then I was broken up with my boyfriend, so he wanted to make it official. And I knew that I really liked him, but she was still friends with Letter B, and Letter B did not know about us. Yeah, best friends. I mean, not just like I said, friends since like the eighth grade. I was staying at her house very often, stuff, and I. Didn't really know if I was ready to give that up, so I told him that I wasn't ready for that. Or let her be found out because you told her, but he didn't tell me he was No, her. well, she kind of started catching on. She would see me texting her. I think she caught me texting her. I don't know how she found out, but she basically told me, hey, do you and Kira have a thing? And I was like, I tried acting it off, but then she kind of kept pushing it, kept pushing it, and I was like, yes. I was like, yeah, kind of, I think I like her. And then that's when all hell broke loose. Yeah, and so she wanted to talk to me, so I went and talked to her, and I told her the truth, and I told her everything that had happened. We fought, but then we decided that we would be friends. So then I was like, okay, like, I don't think me and Oscar are gonna work out. And the next day, she was in class, and my other best friend was in the same class as her, and heard her talking crap about me. I don't remember what she was saying, but she was just talking crap about me. And it wasn't even about us, it was just Yeah, about just her. about me. So at that point, I was like, why am I gonna give up a relationship that I could potentially have for a really long time, which obviously we had a baby together? For something that I'm not even sure what lost out of high school. She's already talking crap about me. We ended up stopping friends and we started dating. It worked out. It worked out in the end. It was a lot of drama and a lot of sad times. There were a lot of tears. <laughs> a lot of fights. Okay, so the next like biggest thing of the like the biggest thing of the story is that Kira cheated on Oscar, Hannah, who was her nanny. Um and she cheated with Preston, who was um Hannah's fiance so they were i don't think they were married they might have been married i've been seeing conflicting things online honestly about that i i didn't want to just believe it at face value that she was the nanny um and what you'll learn is that she yes she did babysit the kids but uh I, yeah i just found it like really important to kind of learn that not that it like minimizes any of the hurt or whatever happened i just i just wanted to find out the timelines myself so it took a lot of digging um and we look at my notes here what i want to share first is february 2019 is when it was mentioned or shown at least that Kyla was babysitting. The, I, I don't know if they're any friends with her anymore. They call her Kiki, Kyla, whatever. She was babysitting the kids. And, you were early, you and then like in all the videos in 2019, you can always see when they get home, she's there with the kids. And then the next mention of somebody is June 2nd, 2019. When Kira's at the office, she mentions that the kids are with Sydney. All right, like I mentioned, the kids went to the park with Sydney because both those things are really close to here, both Sydney's house and the park. So I think the kids were getting a bit bored and we sent them with Sydney. Um, and then June 5th, 2019, so three days later, Oscar mentions that they have a new babysitter, but they don't want to introduce her yet. I actually got a new oh, babysitter, yeah! but we don't want to introduce her until we're 100% sure she's a fit for the fam. I think she is, but you know, we made the mistake of showing our last babysitter yeah. a little oh, bit too yeah. early. Not that we didn't like her, she just wasn't the right fit for the family. She, was a, she is a great person, very nice. She was honestly a sweetheart, she just wasn't what we were looking for. Not in a bad way. The fumes are too bad for her. Baby, I can't do that. Well, looks like you can't work. Let's give up that now. Just. I don't want to give up either. What do I do now? You just give her to dad. 
That's okay. To you? Yeah, you have to. I'd rather give her to Sydney. <laughs> well, thanks. Sorry, I love you so much, but you don't like crying. And so the timing of that is that Sydney is the new babysitter. Is my assumption. I'm not. I'm not sure if that really is it, but. Uh, it looks as if that that was when Sydney started. It was June 2019. And then June 16th, 2019, Oscar gets home from wherever he was. And Hannah's there with the kids in the driveway. She's babysitting the kids. Daddy! Sissy! Hi, move! Move so I can park the car. Go on the grass so I can park the car. Mommy's at, at work. What? And then I noticed that on trips, at least, Hannah was the one who went with them. So uh, on the next vlog after that one, she went to Florida with them for Karen and Qua's wedding, who are another um, family vlogger channel. I used to kind of watch them sometimes, um, but they went to Florida and there's footage of Hannah with them in the airport and all that sort of stuff with the kids. Not to mention that we have a bunch of people coming with us, like Gabe and our babysitter Hannah to help out because we're going to be gone during the entire wedding. Ready, I feel So she's the one that they brought. And then it wasn't until a few months later, October 2019, Kira says the kids are home with the babysitter and then they get home and that babysitter is Hannah. So the kids are at home with the babysitter. They're cranky. You guys had a lot of fun in here, wow. Yeah. Like your neck, what happened? Actually, have all been good today. Yeah. So that could have been the new babysitter that they had mentioned. I don't know. But Hannah at this time was in school for nursing is what I've learned through watching their vlogs and whatever. And then the next, I was watching, I like skipped ahead because you could see that it was like the same people watching the kids, blah, blah, blah. And then July 2020 is when Hannah was working with Kira at her boutique that she opened, which is BBK. And then Oscar leaves with all the kids. So it appears that Hannah no longer watched the kids from that point on, like the pandemic time and on. We're off for help, but Kira's got all her employees here today, so I don't want to get in the way of them. Not all of them, but yes, we do have help you're today. You're right. I think you're just missing one person. Hannah, what the f are you? <laughs> just <kidding. laughs> Did you ditch work today? <laughs> no, she's got another job, which is like, go Hannah, you know? Well, no, she works here still. She just yeah. got the other job. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to explain. But it sounded like she's she a hard worker, two jobs. She got another job, like she quit and got another job. No, yeah. She could never, you better never, <laughs> you will never. I'm just kidding. And then June 2021, they mentioned that they are, they have a new nanny who's starting and they talk about like during COVID, you know, not having anyone watching their kids. They obviously had to watch their own kids during COVID because everything was shut down. The restrictions were so high. No one knew what was going on. So it appears that that's like when everything kind of stopped for them with getting help and they had to do it themselves as everyone <laughs> typically does. And in case you're wondering, the kids are going to stay with the babysitter. Guys, we got a new one. Oh, this is a long story. Honestly, you guys, we must suck to work with because their homeschool teacher found a new job, which she's been, whoa, she's been wanting that job for quite some time, so we can't blame her for that. But their other babysitter found a new job too, so I'm starting to feel like it's us. We must suck. I mean, think about it, Tush. Like, no, you're you had two partners, the they left you. First of all, yeah, we do have our flaws. Not much, mom, you know. But, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But you guys, first of all, the homeschool teacher, that it's summertime. The kids are going out, like Levi's going to elementary school soon. And then she got offered an opportunity that she was like, well, I think this is like what I went to college for. Mm -hmm. It's to be a director of a place. So like, who Good wouldn't take yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Over what we were doing. And then um, the babysitter. <sighs> Something you just can't say online. <laughs> Baby, but she still left us. Listen, our new babysitter, I don't know, I think technically she's a nanny because she's not like an yeah. occasional, so she's our new nanny. And we love her. The kids yeah, love her. Yeah, she's been amazing. She's super like intelligent, patient, like we really, really love her and we feel like it's a really good fit. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, there's only been one or two other times since having our, since starting our babysitter journey that we've felt that there's a good connection. Like this is we perfect, really yeah. feel confident in this. And uh, then September, 2021, so a few months later, Oscar mentions like her name, Josie. I'm sure you guys have been wondering where she's been all day and Josie has actually been here. What's up, Josie? Hey. <laughs> she's the best guy. She's our, I wouldn't say new, but I think you guys haven't met her, huh? I don't think they've seen you before. She's been with us for quite some time. She's amazing, but she's been helping me out with the kids while Kira's gone. And today she's, I mean, she always helps me with all of them, but today she's been focused on the baby, huh? Yeah. 
And then I've learned through watching their separation is that Josie's name is also mentioned. So I don't know if she still watches the kids at all, but she was the nanny for quite some time after. I think she might've been their longest standing nanny. So that's the timeline. Hannah did, yes, watch the kids. She was the babysitter, but she wasn't the nanny. So she was just there like intermittently, but the other people watched the kids a lot more that I could tell, at least from the vlogs and what they were willing to share. doesn't mean she didn't watch them like all the time, but then eventually Hannah was hired on as a worker for um, Kira and Kira actually mentions in a video, I don't know if I still save that clip, but that she mentions that Hannah's her assistant. And then they started that podcast together and everything. But yeah, I just felt like it was really important to find the timeline and everything like that. It was, it was so time consuming, like I said, to watch it, but I'd rather do that than like look on the Reddit and see the information because I want to learn it myself. Plus I did look on the Reddit and there wasn't, no one, no one ever shared that. No one ever shared the timeline of who watched the kids and whatever. So just wanted to put that out there for you guys know if you are interested. <laughs> and another massive thing within the OK Baby people, Kira and Oscar, is that Kira forced Oscar to get a vasectomy. And what I've learned is that that's actually not true, that it was actually more Oscar who wanted the vasectomy because they were overwhelmed with their kids. So I've always talked about it, so nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. What? We've talked about this, ready? I have scheduled my vasectomy for August 6th. Oh, really? Yeah. It's funny because like, obviously, you, know, you guys know how I feel about that. It's like sad that I can't have another baby, but I do know that's best for our family and our relationship and oh. all things considered. Mm -hmm. So I am happy that you finally did that. That's who you were on the phone with and you were like, I was on the phone and the kids were like, Oh yeah, crazy. crazy. Yeah. So honestly, they were, they were being good up until that point. And after I'd done it, I was like, Oh man, it's going to be kind of sad. Like it's our last little baby or it's going to be our last little one. But from then on out guys, they were crazy off camera, like so much that I, I was just having like a little rough time. I was actually nervous to tell you because I wasn't sure how you're going to feel. I wasn't sure if it was going to be like a... You know? I think when you actually do it might be a little emotional, but yeah. like we've talked, like you said, we've talked about this, we've made this decision together. To be honest, we've just kind of been like, when are we going to do this? But it is kind of we, because like, I'm not having a baby anymore because you're doing it, therefore mm -hmm. it's a we. That is true. You know, earlier I was a little sad, but now I'm like kind of relieved, like, oh my You were goodness. sad, really? Well, not sad, but just like, oh, that is kind of like a, not a sad crazy thought, thing. but a crazy thing. Like, So I'm going to roll the information that I have of when... In her fourth pregnancy, she had a high-risk pregnancy. I believe her first, they didn't know about her placenta previa until she delivered. But then when they found out with her fourth, they had moved to California for healthcare because they didn't want to spend the money out of pocket in Utah. So they moved and spent the money on a house instead. And then they, she was under her dad's healthcare. And like, thank goodness they went there because then they had the family support. But she was high-risk because of having placenta previa and an anterior placenta, which is a placenta that is facing your back versus the front of your belly or something like that, I believe. I just, yeah, I think that's it. Anterior is in your back, yeah. Or the baby's in your back or something. I think she said the baby's in her back, maybe. I can't remember, sorry. My doctor, I don't really know how to explain this. This is kind of hard. My doctor basically is telling me she thinks I have placenta previa again, which if you're familiar with Levi, which I know a lot of you guys came or watched our channel when we had Levi. Um, I had placenta previa and that's why I had to have an emergency C-section. I was bleeding really bad and he was born six weeks early and was in the NICU for a few days. Not too bad, it definitely could have been worse so we were grateful but, so that was kind of dramatic. And so to find out today that she thinks that I have that again is a, a little bit emotional, I guess, and overwhelming. But the combination of placenta previa and an anterior placenta, which she did confirm I for sure have an anterior placenta. The combination of those two things could lead to a lot of really bad things like hemorrhaging, which is like excessive bleeding, essentially bleeding to death. When, and then I could have a hysterectomy, which means they completely remove your uterus. And so um, I have a 60% chance or higher of a lot of these bad situations happening. This is Oscar and I's last baby and we've made that decision together. And Oscar is going to get a vasectomy and I have chosen not to get my tubes tied because I felt like I'm weird about bodily things. A lot of you guys actually relate to that when I say that and I feel weird about getting my tubes tied. I know it's weird because I'm getting surgery anyways, but it's just like one of those things. So anyways, um, my doctor today told me that she doesn't think my body can have any more children. I could possibly get pregnant again, but to have a successful, healthy pregnancy again um, would be very unlikely. So she was 
and Basic, dangerous. Yeah, and, and very dangerous. For me, more so. She didn't say, like, the baby wouldn't necessarily survive, but she just said, like, there's a high chance that I possibly wouldn't survive that. So, obviously, that makes it more, yes, we're not having more kids. And like I said, we both already made this choice. But there's just something about other people, like, telling you what you can and can't do, for me at least. I think I'm really weird at this way because Oscar's like, I don't get it. If, it. if you know it's dangerous for your body, like, just don't do it. No, I, I completely understand what's, there's a difference between having a choice and then feeling like that choice is being taken away from you. Yeah, and I guess that's what I kind of feel like is that the choice is being, like, taken away in a way. Mm -hmm. And she really wants to tie my tubes and she was very adamant about just doing it like it almost kind of felt like she wasn't giving me an option um and she said you know i don't want to i don't remember this exact word i'm going to try to use the word that she used but she's like i don't want to make monopoly. you feel like i'm taking monopoly over your body and i just felt like if you're gonna say that maybe you shouldn't say whatever you're gonna say anyways because you're obviously it's like when you say i'm sorry to be rude but and it's like it, just because you're sorry, well, I don't know. Yeah, I think they're just, they're just like, this is concerning. Like, yeah. This is not Which good. I 100% understand. I'm not saying she, like, I, yeah. I know that I shouldn't have another baby. It just is, like, frustrating when you feel like you don't have that choice. No, it's just, it's true. Because it's one thing when we talk about it with the human. Yeah, baby. like, it's one thing when Oscar's like, I don't want to have another baby. It's overwhelming. And I'm like, yeah. okay, yeah, whatever. But, like, also, and it is overwhelming. Like, I told him, and, again, that's why we made the choice. I feel overwhelmed with three kids, as it is. We're about to have our fourth. I know we'll be plenty good in the kid department. But just, I am 23, and, like, I just don't know how I'll feel in 10 years. It's the biggest thing is that, like, whatever. There's either people who say that, or there's people who say, like, she left him because she, he wouldn't give her more kids. And what I've learned from watching the relationship through here is that they were both really overwhelmed. The fourth kid is what did it for them. I always get questions like, what's the hardest adjustment? One to two kids, two to three kids, three to four kids. Like, what was the hardest for you? And by far, I can tell you three to four children has been the hardest adjustment in life I've ever had to make. Not just kid-wise, but literally in general. Like, I've had to readjust everything in my life my work schedule you know my schedule with Oscar not that we have a schedule but like our romance and everything like that's just been completely put on the back burner like nothing is going right <laughs> or how I felt was right or how it used to be and anytime I've had kids before like two to three or one to two like I'd have to tweak things a little bit but for the most part we just would eventually fall back into our regular routine and that just did not happen this time I felt like there was no the adjustment period never ended it was too many kids they yes even though they had a lot of help like they had nannies and babysitters it was too much for them it was hard on the relationship everything so um, they just couldn't handle having four children i believe that was part of the demise of the relationship and it's not to blame the child obviously it's to blame you know the them they didn't you know whatever maybe they didn't know their capacity and a lot of people have way too many more kids than they can ever handle yeah so it appears that oscar is the one who actually like if you look at comments on youtube and stuff like that you'll see on his vasectomy video like he actually wanted to get the vasectomy uh and uh kira felt scared getting her two side and as a woman i understand i've only had one surgery a laparoscopy for my endometriosis but I think a lot of people like to, and I'm sure they're just hating on her too because she cheated allegedly on Oscar with Preston, but uh, I don't think that she's, like she's had four C-section. That, that is not good, as you would have heard in that vasectomy video. I'm good. And you guys? Wait, I'm nervous. You should be. I mean, we're going to fault, man. Why wouldn't you be? Um, I'm actually nervous in doing it on you though too. Have a seat here. Oh, wow. All right. Yes, your age. So what's what's the story? I have four kids. Yeah, <laughs> that's the story. Okay, that's well, the story. Well, I've had four C-sections, so um, I don't really have a lot of scar tissue left. Your four kids are all you together. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, do it. Yeah. Yes. Um, and, and, and do this not only, you know, this is, four C-sections yeah. is, is bad. Yeah. So, so um, eight years, seven years? The other thing that I wanted to talk about really quickly is every time we've talked about the vasectomy on Instagram or even on here, we've gotten comments um, directed towards me just like how I feel about it. A lot of you guys know I wanted to have 
a million, a billion, gajillion kids. And um, then I found out a year ago, pretty much a year ago, that I could not have any more babies or I should not have any more babies. It would be dangerous for both the baby and me. Um, and even Aura's pregnancy was a bit risky of no. a pregnancy. So uh, I kind of have known for a while now and I was able to like cope with it, I guess, and just learn to appreciate what I have, which I know that sounds ridiculous to learn to appreciate, but it is hard in life. You always, you know, especially with kids, like I love my kids. I want to have more. I wish I could have a million of them, like I said, but I know that's not what's best for my kids or for me or my body um, or for our relationship. There's a lot of things yeah, that it wouldn't be good for. Much. It would just be harder for everyone. All yeah. Day. So it was a lot harder for me to accept as a lot of you guys probably saw a year ago when I was told, but I've come to terms with it and I do feel happy. That's not good. I know people who've had to stop at three, like three is the max often that doctors will do because it is really dangerous to have that many C-sections. Moving forward, Kira should not be having any more children. Like she talks about wanting them with Preston. If she does, she's going to, for the benefit of it, her children and for her so her children actually have a mother she should do surrogacy and i know people are against that too because some celebrities really abuse that but for someone like kira surrogacy is actually something that would be really beneficial because she would get the her desired outcome of having another child but she wouldn't put her body through that danger and because you just never know like i don't know why some people have their placenta grow in a certain spot or whatever whatever happens like i had a high-risk pregnancy with my last child and uh if I knew for sure that the chance of having that type of pregnancy again would happen, I wouldn't dare have another child. But I'm also, side note about me, I'm like personally maxed at two. I have a desire to want more children, but I know I cannot mentally and physically and financially provide for uh, more children. Not until maybe my next, my first two are older and maybe I do have help because we don't have help right now. And you know, that sort of thing. Anyways, I can't imagine these people who have like nannies and stuff and only do YouTube how they can't handle their children. It just, it blows my mind. I just, I just, especially now that I'm doing YouTube, like it's really easy. It's very time consuming and it takes discipline, but it's easy in compared to going to a job, you know, like you can fit it in anywhere in your day if you have a supportive partner and they had babysitters and help and whatever, but sorry, going off into tangent, but I feel like it's really important to unpack that because again, going off I went off and then going back is that it's okay for Oscar to have a vasectomy. Like women are often held as a responsibility to do everything because we get pregnant, we grow a baby, we birth a baby, but men can hold part of the responsibility of getting it cut because also there's problems. I have, I know somebody who got pregnant in their tubes and then lost the baby. That That is a possibility too. So I just think there's a lot more dangers with women getting their tubes tied. With men, the dangers are a lot lower. You know, I just think they... <laughs> men tend to be no offense but a little bit more of a baby um i shouldn't even say baby babies are strong <laughs> they men just are women are strong okay we are very strong our bodies go through a lot um but wanted to share that with you guys i felt that was really important to bring up because there's a lot of hate going in both directions for that because the homies are here what's up guys we got preston zach you guys know kyla and hannah you know we used to have this tradition in utah called game nights which we we have been missing out on but we got to make up for this last weekend we played last night i think it's got ice cream milkshake cookie crisp and a cookie that is ridiculous that's what ice cream will do to people game night i'm excited or who's excited <laughs> Uh, I mean, she's kind of hot. New, new. <laughs> Who? What? <bu> uh, <laughs> okay. What's up, guys? Oh my goodness! And you brought the goods. Look at that! Look at that! I have the real goods. You have the real goods? Yeah, that was so that was anticlimactic. <laughs> <laughs> all right, bro. The girls are counting us out, all right? They don't think we stand a chance. They don't know what they're in for, though, okay? They might never want to make this ever again, like this charcuterie plate, once they see how good we do, huh? It's, it's over the moon. Exactly, literally. You know, I talk a big talk, so this better live up to the talk. Now that the kids are asleep, it's time to party. We've got the adult drinks going. Preston and Hannah made these for us once again. They made us some goodies. They whipped it up in the kitchen, so we really don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> it's supposed to be vodka with like margarita flavors. Tequila. Oh, tequila. Sorry, tequila with margarita flavors, and then we're gonna splash lime and make it more margarita-ish. Okay. 
like this is a science experiment. How much? Just a shot? We're just taking a shot? Yeah. yeah. Cheers to me, 21. Cheers. 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 Oh, okay. I was like, I just, Preston's 21, right? Yeah. No, okay. 22. 22. I was going to say, where did I get 21 from? Somewhere. <laughs> I'm 21. Cheers oh, to shit. another game night. There's what is it? I'm 21. <laughs> <laughs> oh, must be nice. <laughs> She's always spilling something. <laughs> it's clumsy and that's just made. You all have to embrace it. It's a, yeah, we, we do. What? Playboy. That was like a fire. The party is still continuing. I was gonna say it's winding down, but we're just getting up there, aren't we? Check out who's with us. What's up, dude? Give me some. Give me some. Hannah, let's check it out. The whole gang is here. Kira, Hannah, and Preston just got back from the warehouse. Your other trucks have it. This has a heated steering wheel. Oh, my Tahoe had that too. Oh my god, that's the only reason why I missed the Tahoe. The heated seat, or air conditioned seats, and the heated steering wheel. It was so nice. Especially after snowboarding, bro. Oh, your yeah. hands are all cold and you're stuff. Dead. You're just done. Mm hmm. Perfect. All right, we got the kids in the back. No pressure. Don't crush my kids, please. No Big steaks are still cooking, but how nice is this? Sunday night, family night. Guys, you'll never believe who I saw on my way home. Yo, what is he doing up there? Your boy's famous. Look at that. Can you believe it? Your boy Preston is famous out here up in northern Utah. Think about this. Out of the entire football team, they chose him to be on that billboard. What does that tell you, huh? Either he's extremely talented, or his team is super ugly. <laughs> Ride has arrived. I thought you guys' names was Uber. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh my gosh. You guys are so cute. I, I saw your text and was like, okay, I don't know if I, she knows her. He's here, foodie's here, and look who decided to join us. What's up, guys? Me. <laughs> it was fun. It was great. Can't wait to see you guys. Oh, not next week, but. Usual. It is always. We'll see you sometime soon. soon. Yeah, we'll see you sometime soon. Preston's got football. We don't get to hang out as much now. Not Game nights aren't as often. And soon. Football, it's all but soon. Football. Soon. Yes. It is all my fault. <laughs> Tell them how it is. <laughs> So something that I didn't really like look in too much is when Kira and Hannah started their podcast is beneath the sheets podcast It is so vulgar. So awful. I'm going to play about 10 minutes of a summary of all their podcasts of the things I felt like was most important without talking about their SEX in crazy detail because they really share that like positions they like and you know, Kira has said stuff about Spanish speaking and how she can't last long when someone speaks Spanish to her. Like, I'm not going to share the, I guess I just said that, but I'm not going to share like her words and like the actual crazy, crazy detail with that. Like I'm not going to, um, but yeah, with that podcast, I feel they had mentioned that they were both with like Kira's with Oscar and Hannah's with Preston for seven years. So it's actually something called the seven year itch. There's a lot of talk about the seven year itch that is losing interest in the existing partner and developing interest in having sex with other partner outside the relationship. The seven year itch is something that people talk about because yeah. it's obviously a thing. It I'm is. sure science has studied that to figure out what it is about seven years. I'm, that would be interesting, right? Yeah. To know what it is. It's like, I think it's the honeymoon phase is over. Yeah. The seven year itch. And in my opinion, I believe that it's a term that suggests around the seven years of marriage, the happiness in the relationship begins to decline. By this point, most people get divorced or even break up. I believe that around this point that most people just start noticing that they're unhappy. Which I'm sure a lot of people have heard. I feel like this is another one of like, just like, like if there's one, two, three points about why they broke up and why Kira cheated, blah, blah, blah. Not that there's, it's good that she did. I very very much disagree with it but I feel like this would be like 1a or 2a whatever it is is the seven year itch like you have to work on your relationship you can't let your relationship go stagnant I think see a lot of people say like and people sometimes believe that you should stay for the kids blah 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 but obviously if they're if you are working on your relationship uh it's not getting better then you obviously shouldn't be together it's not better for the kids I'm not one of those people who think that you should stay for the children because it's not beneficial for them but yeah the, the seven year itch I found that was like an interesting thing but let's go into the podcast this podcast this is I've said in other videos of mine that I felt like I lost brain cells I played this part for my husband this morning to just show him like this is the podcast he's like oh my god he understood finally what I meant by that because it is vulgar disgusting they sound so gross 
two unqualified young girls should not be starting a podcast talking about this, especially with the social media platforms that they had. I think it's wrong. This kind of information should only come from an SEX therapist and psychologist, not from two young girls who, like Kira was with two other people before, but as a little teen, and Hannah was only ever with Preston. Like they don't have the expertise and experience to speak from these topics to people. Like it's so gross, but yeah, I'm gonna roll that for you just so you can see. But BTS is actually a podcast slash YouTube channel that Hannah and I, you guys know Hannah, bestie slash lots of things. She's lots of things. Um, and so we have a podcast together where we talk about things 18 and over. Jazz, intercourse, and welcome back to Beneath the Sheet, where we make the uncomfortable comfortable. comfortable. Although today I'm feeling extremely uncomfortable. I do feel like there's like a first time that's like awkward and not really fully doing it, you know? And exactly. then there's like a real first time. Exactly. And I feel like uh, most people have those like two experiences. Yeah. I lost my virginity when I was 13. Oh my god. <laughs> 13? Yeah, but I had like childhood issues. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that like 13, I don't, don't do it. Honestly, I had like an emotional issue. Like losing it that young, I was not ready. Even me. Yeah, like scrolling through TikTok, I think I see girls and I'm like, like she's hot. And then I'm like, oh, she's 14. literally yeah. so young. Like once you look into it. When I did have periods, I would just use like the Tampax. Yeah. unscented plastic yeah basic. i just i think i need to get over it and like i told hannah i was like one time you're okay. gonna have to put it in for me because no, i literally will help you it's i get so scared something i think i also i'm very weird about like bodily functions yeah, like, like stuff being inside or, like outside <laughs> yeah <laughs> although during sex if I think about it, I will feel weird. Really? Uh, yes, it makes me feel very so uncomfortable. Bad. Although, when it feels so good, you kind of forget that. But, like, <laughs> yeah, you know. Think about, like, there are billions, billions of people in this world. world. Like, okay, yes. yes. Yeah. If it doesn't work out with who you're with, there's somebody else. You will there. find somebody else. There is, yeah. yeah. You will find somebody. But, but like, if you're happy with where you're at, you're happy with all yeah. the things, there's, there's no, no reason to go and fix that. And that goes into, like, if you lose your virginity somebody and you stay with them forever awesome if you don't like that's okay you will find somebody else that you connect with on that level and every other level like, yeah don't put so much pressure on yourself i think the best advice i have ever been given which was oscar oscar's mom i was gonna say all what my words we're getting rid of the word department delete the best advice i've ever been given which is by oscar's mom my mother-in-law yes um is that Okay, this is, I don't know if I should say this, but a different devil, same hell, basically. Oh, yeah. So, you will always, you can find somebody else in the world. But, if you find that person, they will also have flaws. And also, I think that one thing too is like, of course, I wish that I lost it to the person that I will spend the rest of my life with, which is Oscar. I wish I would have lost it to him, but at the same yeah. time, I don't care as much as I thought that I would. Preston and I have been together for so long, so long and mm -hmm. I mean, I think about sometimes like, I mean, knock on wood, obviously we want to spend the rest of our lives together, yeah. like we're engaged, like we're going to get married and all this stuff, but I could never imagine having sex with somebody else. Yeah. Like that just to me, like, because that is so vulnerable and like, literally, like we have gotten like so comfortable with each other and like what to do. If I ever was to have to do that with anybody else, like, I think yeah. that would just be so awkward to people. And it is, I can tell you. I was okay. I just got 10 it. times louder because it like it is, okay? It's so Very awkward. I had to have a lot of alcohol in my system, which I also don't recommend, <laughs> to get through the experience because it's very weird, weird to be with somebody who you're comfortable with and then have to go to somebody else that you're not comfortable yeah. with. And yeah. then, like, yeah, it is It is yeah, something that if you can do it your way, that's the way to go. But if it doesn't happen for you that way, I think, yeah. you know, you'll get past right. that. And God, it happened that way for me because I'm like, what the hell would I have done? Yeah. I have no fun. Yeah, because like yeah well i will say I too though so i feel awkward. like you and preston have a very good relationship mentally physically you have a lot of chemistry right and that helps like deep with like, like 50 shades of gray yes picture, picture 50, 50 shades of gray and then this happening oh, no. like that's what it is like i couldn't even watch that in the movies i got too well that's not true actually because i think sex 
I know the most about you, actually, because we're, I mean, clearly that's why we're here doing this together. Yeah, Yeah, we are very open about our sex life. Mm -hmm. If I had to assume, I feel like you would be more submissive because from what I hear, you're very about pleasing the other person. Definitely, yeah. And that's something I lack at Yeah. to where I'm like, maybe too dominant because I'm like oh whoops didn't know you wanted something didn't know you we were here for you too (laughs) when I am sober yes I definitely want to please him and that is more on my mind than pleasing myself which I mean luckily we don't ever have the problem like it's both of us but like he you he's good at pleasing you anyway as well yes but like if it was like the way that it happened I would make sure he's pleased and then if I was great if not like i wouldn't be upset because as long as he is but drinking i'm like excuse me like yeah. no that's not okay like guys hannah when she drinks out. literally it's not even <laughs> with activity it's like you haven't poured me a shot yet like the assertive level goes up oh 20, yes i just thousand. get like a bossy bit and good luck but we all him. love it i think we can all say as a group we love to see hannah get a little sassy because she's so nice at least for me like, I was dating to marry. Mm-hmm. Like, I wasn't dating. Yeah, always me, too. Yeah, like, yes. I wasn't dating just to have boyfriends and just to have fun and this. Like, I was always dating, like, okay, like, am I going to marry you? Am I going to be Am with I going to have kids with you? Is yes. this my future? And if not, then, like, we're not going to work out because, to me, that's pointless. Yes, I agree. If that's what you like to do, like, great. But I feel like it's the same for friendships. Like, I'm not necessarily trying to be friends for this day. Like, I want to be friends forever and i want to like build that friendship and build that relationship and introduce you to my kids and have you be their aunt and like all this and fans oscar would never do it with me in fact if i did only fans oscar might leave me he's not a fan of the idea not into it but i have always like i bring it up to him just like cover your face put some makeup over your tattoos (laughs) (laughs) i think it would be fun honestly and i think i would like Learn to love myself a little more. I, I like watching Kira and Hannah shop because that shit is fucking comical. <laughs> um, Maybe reality show. But I want to say something about the videotaping. Oh, if yeah. you during have the person record it and then watch it, like in the same time, you can watch it and it's good. Really? Yeah. Ooh, that would like okay, like that turns me off. by I really I, after it does turn me off. If we're not having sex. I don't want to see it. Like, just cringy. Like, in no. my head, I look so good, so hot, bad bitch. And then I see that I'm not that. And Oscar then I uses like, flash. <laughs> wow. So it, good. No, it is f- disgusting. Like, what the f is the point? <laughs> of what? Like, life is just exhausting. You're oh, tired. Oh, my God. Don't. That is, like, so lame. That's why you just Shut live up. life to the fullest. No, YOLO. I, I, I say need all you the to time. be on my side because no, I don't like when you're not on my I'm side. I'm not. You can sleep when you're dead that's my point yeah so don't say it's so sad or like I what's didn't the say point that. i'm not being like that dramatic about it you made it that dramatic. <laughs> not like jump off a bridge what's the point i'm talking about like what's the point like it's just this oh, yeah. circle where everybody has to exactly. try to get a job just be happy this. and have fun and do you every day and just live life to the absolute fullest and you're like the fine. angel on somebody's shoulder and i'm like the devil who's like yeah <laughs> do, it. do it and i'm like no but you're gonna get a piece of candy later. literally <laughs> yes. like you're too happy i need you to frown right now like yeah. learn how to have the banter learn how to have a conversation first and then if it leads to arguing but just don't be hurtful that's yeah. the biggest thing like when you start to throw like low blows i've been bad at that i'm not gonna lie i've had a hard time with like boundaries in relationships and like what especially fighting yes. once i get mad which is so funny because i'm not an angry person but that's why i think because once the i do switch, get angry we're there you're f- angry Good about luck. everything that you could ever be angry about comes out in that moment like that kind of angry <laughs> have you been around for that you <laughs> no like you i'm have just like about- trying yes. to prepare yeah. myself for when you get angry at me <laughs> I'm not- this is all exciting in the beginning but how do you keep it exciting as the years go by hmm. <laughs> how do you honestly just <laughs> i think that you just have to like explore each other's wants and needs yes and, and like try don't forget things. to keep exploring that. right yeah like, like don't forget to keep dating and to keep yeah. don't forget to keep dating the spark there yeah switch it up a little bit if you're doing the same positions all the time same places all the time like (laughs) do it somewhere different or put on music if you don't usually or just 
try new things and so what do you guys think have you listened to this podcast before like this is i had to block out as much as i could possibly block out but then how we ended the podcast they're like laughing about like the tips how to make like your sex life better i feel like that was really weird because i feel like that was the time that maybe this is my okay now i'm getting to like a, a theory or conspiracy is that i actually believe that hannah preston and kira were in like a secret s like sexual relationship Kira did, did like a, a drunk Q and A, which, which honestly I feel like was so fun. It was, but good, good luck to all those people who saw that, that because I know I think I was pretty good Ooh. at like not posting anything I don't want yeah. to. But I think if I could take back any one of them, it would be that one because I don't know that I've ever shared that. Not that I care. Like yeah. I'm an open person. Oh yeah, but and, I, mean, I think everybody knew the answers to all the other ones. But that one, I was like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, we shit. I, I should probably ask him. I know. I don't know. Well, then I did ask him, and he said threesome. And yeah. I'm not opposed yeah. to threesomes. It just does scare me because I think that's one of those things where you think you'd be open to it, and then after you'd be like, oh shit, yeah. that hurt my feelings. Yeah, or like, like my feelings are like maybe embarrassing almost because at least, at least us, we're very comfortable in our relationships. Mm-hmm. We talked about this last time. Like, it's, it's such a vulnerable thing that, that like, to just have like some. Whether a stranger or even if it was another friend, like that would either change like your relationship or like just knowing some stranger was there while I was having sex with my man. Like, I don't know. I feel like I would way overthink it, way be like, oh my God, you kissed her one more time than you kissed me. Like, how dare you? Like, I think if I did it, it would have to be like in Vegas with like somebody we paid. Very intoxicated. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this to my sources. Hi. Hi, did you read profile? Yes. You interested? We are. Are you? Paradise, where are you? Yes, I am. So he's asking where she's from, blah, blah, blah. Don't forget they're in Vegas at this point. This is April 21st, 2022. Source asked Preston for a photo of them because this again, they're asking this girl to be a part of a threesome, right? They just want to have some fun and uh, consenting adults and again, whatever. And this is the photo that Preston sent my source. The top here says this. We love that. Hi, baby girl. Just getting time to respond myself. Let's grab drinks and show you what rough really feels like. Kira. So this is here texting from Preston's account. Could be, could not be, whatever. Could be Preston doing that. Oh, I like the sound of that. I'm excited to meet you both. Text us what good time is and we can find, text, text us what a good time is and we can find a good bar and meet you there if that's okay with you. Yes, sounds good. Thanks, Lil. If you want to prove that Kira's in Vegas, here it is. I did find it. So Kira's here in Vegas at the Wynn Hotel, which is a very, very posh, fancy hotel. Very expensive. They keep talking, keep talking, just getting to know each other, all that kind of stuff. Um, doesn't ask what kids or anything like that, but, but asks, like, have you guys ever done this before? The threesomes. And Kira said, like, she asked, did, did you get jealous of him and all that kind of stuff? And Kira said this, according to my source. Well, not really, because I was the other third person before this. She said those words. I was the third person. And so now I'm, the, I'm together with him and I'm not the third person anymore. So I don't really get jealous, but we, we did this and it, it ruined my friendship with his, for all this purposes, his fiance. I'm trying, I'm trying to make this say, so she's basically saying that they did threesomes and that it turned out bad because they felt feelings for each other and started dating and it ruined their Preston and Hannah's relationship. So let's do the math again on that. Kira was likely having a relationship with Hannah and Preston in September and it could have been before that, which means that they were cheating. All of them were sitting there behind Oscar's back, having threesomes behind his back. And think about how effing disgusting that is because they did a podcast. We're going to go over it in a second. We're going to go over them, some of the cringiest moments of it again, where they sat Oscar down in a room with these three effing lying douchebags. He had no idea what they were doing behind the scenes, and they brought him onto a podcast talking about sex. Disgusting, first of all. Okay, so I asked my source, hey, can I get any more receipts? She said, if you have any I can give you some more, but she didn't want to give too much more. The, way I, the reason I think that she is telling the truth is because I asked her to share Preston's phone number, and she shared Preston's phone number, and then I corroborated that with someone who knew what Preston's phone number was, and they were the exact same number. Like, unless Preston and Kira are hiring this person to catfish me into giving give the story so that it rises their star, I don't know. I can't see why she thinks that would be good, considering... This is not good news. Like, why would she want this out there? So, again, I tend to want to believe my source. This episode, we're talking about threesomes. My yes. my opinion... Well, first of all, I've never had a threesome with... Agreed. Never. ...anybody. Um, nope. I, I don't know how I feel. I go back and forth. Because sometimes I'm like, I feel like it can add to your relationship. And most times, I'm actually for it. Like, to be honest, Oscar's definitely the no... Which is funny, because I definitely know that's the type of porn that he watches. But at the same time, he always says, like, no, I think he just knows yeah. it wouldn't be a good idea. It's like a fantasy type of thing, yes. but, like, he never would want fantasy. to act on it. Yeah. yeah. Whereas I'm, like, once you've been with somebody for so long, I'm, like, as long, there's got to be rules, of course. Yeah. I do think that you can't just, like, sleep with a friend. It can't be, like, someone you oh, know. yeah. That makes it too personal and too likely for things to evolve yes. from it, I yeah. feel like. I agree. I think, so, I think, like, overall, I've definitely thought about it, and I've even thought, like, it's a good idea but i think i also know like it's probably it's it's if there's a chance it could end bad it's not worth the risk which is why we never have plus neither of us have a huge interest in it so i guess my opinion is indifferent i'm sure it's great for some relationships i know that it can be very harmful Mm -hmm. for others and i wouldn't say i'm opposed to it but there'd have to be a lot of rules in place yeah so when you say you're not opposed to it i'm assuming you mean another girl no, I don't right? think I would do two you guys. Would, that's a whole lot. Oh, of that's so different. I feel like that. Like, <laughs> I guess that's considered a threesome. But I feel like that's like. So, what do you? What lot. do you think when you think of a threesome? Is two girls okay? okay. Yes. Yeah. 
because with the kind of stuff they're talking about, about getting WET and SEX positions and the crazy nasty shit they talk about, they, it was, it was, this is, I feel like this is like the crux. This is the reason why they truly just ended their relationships and whatever. Like, I believe they were in a threesome and then they had a secret relationship where they did stuff because they even had a secret, like they went to Vegas and did a Q&A there and that was disgusting and Oscar was like by himself a lot of the time and then they even mention how like Hannah casually mentions how she tried to have sex with Preston and then uh, Kira and Oscar were sleeping in the same room um the next question is I found a good one. Oh, who asked for sex more Oscar or Kira or Hannah or Preston <laughs> I wonder hmm Preston <laughs> No. Wait, are they asking out of all of us? Like I all think four, so. like, or, like out of the couples. couples. Yeah, Preston asked for it more than you. Yeah, I feel like you always ask for it. I don't know. I feel like it's not like I ask. Yes. Oh my gosh. I think it's a even. We're on the same playing field. I think just when we're around, maybe I see you because we're always drinking, and then we're like. Maybe. Ooh. I guess it's not like a like we're just kind of on the same wavelength. I guess. Mm-hmm. Tried last night. Preston was literally sleeping. So I was just trying to get them kisses. He was not. You did not try last night. I oh, hope you didn't try because we I not have this conversation right now. No. Hannah last night Shut tried up. to wake me up not to have sex. <laughs> <but> <laughs> get a remote yes and she was so sassy to me well they fell asleep with the tv on and like i can't do that oh i fell asleep so fast and so i went to go get the remote back to turn the tv off and i like gently like touched kira's arms like i didn't scare her awake and she looked at me like the biggest like what the fuck are you doing in my face right now look and then you just turned over and went back to sleep and just totally ignored me i'm like did "Uh, i give you the remote no no. i'm scared i'm like that's fuck to do that you're just a gross individual if you're gonna have sex in the same room as your friends that's so gross and disrespectful but that just shows like the level of lack of maturity that these people have i think that this podcast was like the reason why because you could see even how like kira dressed pre-podcast how she dressed post podcast and just like it did help her gain confidence i like that's what she always talks about gaining confidence blah 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 i don't know I think this podcast was just so gross and just the demise of the relationship. And I think the reason why maybe Hannah hasn't come out and talked about it is because then it would come out that they had like a sexual relationship possibly. This is just my assumption based on like listening to the whole podcast. I listened to everything and it's so gross. I, you can just tell the difference in how they sound because there's not video for all the podcasts online. Like people have saved and then re-uploaded, but there's not much out there. Um, that's just after listening to it, I fully believe that just like how they sound and their inflections and their voice and all that sort of stuff. Like I've listened to it so much. I truly, truly believe that they were in a relationship together. And this is why everything ended is because, you know, they did something they shouldn't have done. And it's just so weird too, that they had, that Kira has mentioned that Oscar's like thing that he wanted to do was have a threesome, but then, uh, she was against it. And then suddenly like, uh, so I don't know if I played that for you yet, but at in season one, she had mentioned that Oscar wanted to do a threesome and she would never do it. And then in season two, around the time that they allegedly, just from Dad Challenges podcast um, video, that they allegedly started sleeping together, them three, without Oscar. Um, around that time, then suddenly Kira says that she's, four, that they say, oh, we have a never. Nope, nope. Like That's what Hannah says too, is like, we've never had one. But then Kira suddenly so- says that she's open to it, which is weird because she was so against it. Now suddenly you're open to it around the same time that you allegedly started having them, you know, with your friend. It's odd. And yeah, I just, I just think it's really weird. And even like small things, like in that one that Oscar was in after Hannah, or after Kira and Oscar announced their breakup, I felt like Hannah was kind of like, throwing little digs at Oscar like she like didn't care about him sharing about himself and stuff like a lot of people know you but some don't I like humble want yourself to explain the ex situation but do we want to explain not that? right now well so you just it. said explain that but it's fine that is baby daddy of four love him so much so cute <laughs> Oscar okay Morales. maybe on YouTube Oscar Morales yep. this is Preston just Preston Preston, <laughs> Hannah, Thank you're you. supposed to give his introduction. I'm waiting <laughs> for you. I'm waiting for yours. He's the behind the this scenes This is man. my not baby daddy because apparently we have some like baby daddy that he doesn't <laughs> want to be a baby daddy. I don't know. We're figuring it out. <laughs> yes, we switched to my house. Um, oh. Upstairs, away from everything. Yeah. It's a good spot. Yeah. Really nice. We're just... My house. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Our house. I know we're exes oh. and stuff. Oh, okay. Can but you guys I'm give us an explanation? Like half Come on. Half what half? Give right us now. 50-50. But like, it depends time? who worked more today. 
Whoa. <laughs> Amy. So, so this is our Oscars hey. office. Hey. So we are in Oscars law. Pause, guys. This is not a therapy session right now. This is Beneath the Sheets Wait, podcast. Wait, are you sure? We're right. going to talk about sex. So you guys can... You're not therapist, Hannah. Wait, you oh, should have told me this Fuck before. No. Wait, hold, I on, didn't... hold up, hold up. I'm, I'm divorced, technically, so sex. What is sex? Technically, you're not married. Oh. Give us an explanation. Last time we heard from you here... You guys were together and fine and having sex well, and all the things. So what happened? Go to OKBaby.com. Just, uh, yes. YouTube. Like, do you we don't really? Need to talk about this yeah. Right now. No, <laughs> no, not a deep thing. Just this life happens and now and, uh, they are now exes. Yeah, life happens. Baby and, daddy uh, and baby mom. Kira dumped me. <laughs> oh my. So editing Jessica here. The only thing I forgot to share in this video was in regards to their businesses being registered. Uh, I've seen another creator on here, I don't want to like bad talk people, but say that Kira owns OK Baby and she's keeping up the channel because she wants money and she's evil and this and that, whatever. Well, I can attach the screenshots here of the search I did, is that Oscar actually owns OK Baby. He's a the registered agent. He's something else. The other screenshot I can't find, like I did pay for it so I could post it if someone is really curious, but for all of them. And then Kira at the same address, the previous address was registered for her current business, which is Kira Sil Silverstein or whatever. So Oscar actually owns the channel. So it's actually up to him to delete the channel and they should because they share their children in so such crazy detail, like it's not good. But yeah, Kira doesn't own it, it's Oscar. So he's probably keeping it up and she's, they're probably both keeping quiet because he's probably getting whatever money that channel is making. It's like they developed this like hate for him, but then Hannah's seen as like this really nice person online, which I don't really get. Like I'm sure she's really sweet and I know she was wronged, but was she wronged um, if the full truth came out what people think she was wronged? If, if it was indeed true that they had a relationship and she was a consenting adult and then, they just did something that they probably shouldn't have done because of course that's gonna ruin your relationship. It makes no sense to do that. Anyway, so who am I? Just a person on the internet interested in trending topics. <laughs> but I've been wanting to talk about this for a while. I found it interesting to look into and I never want to talk about them or look at them ever again. I don't care. Like, yes, I care because I looked into it, but like they're so exhausting and I believe that they really brought this on themselves, not Oscar because, well, I mean, you could call it karma because of how he started his relationship, but then he was a teen when it happened. So, and then they had kids after, so it wasn't good. Before I started this, I was like, not on Kira's side, but not like fully against her. But then after looking into it, I'm like, really against Kira? Like, she oh, likes to say that like, you can't control who you fall in love with. It's like, yes, you can. Like that person's off limits you know maybe don't maybe don't do that but yeah anyways i really enjoyed actually talking about a topic that wasn't true crime i'm definitely going to continue true crime but i'll talk about like trending things i was think i was actually looking to the gypsy rose stuff is anyone interested if i share my perspective on the gypsy rose trial and case and her getting released just the other day like i find this really interesting and her um boyfriend her ex-boyfriend now but he was her boyfriend when the crime was committed he is looking at he filed an appeal and that was rejected and then and now a new lawyer of his is looking at filing another appeal to have his case re-looked at, which I think is very interesting. But let me know if you guys want me to talk about that. I'm considering doing that and maybe doing an update on the Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra case. Um, I might do that. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, if you didn't, let me know. I'm sure people will let me know. People like to talk about me talking really fast. I talk fast because I'm excited. People in my family talk fast and get on TikTok. Everyone talks fast on TikTok. People aspire to talk as fast as I do. You may not believe that, but I like to talk fast, okay? And I, I've watched creators who talk really slow and I'm like, snooze fest, I don't enjoy it. <laughs> anyway, sorry about that. <sighs> Long outro. I appreciate you guys being here. Thank you so much for subscribing if you have. If you haven't, please consider subscribing. I would love to have you here and uh, have a great day. Bye guys.